Hello everybody! I love doing this video every month. This is the one where we talk about what we sold on eBay and what we got for it, what we learned, and what we might do differently in the future. And hopefully this is helpful to you too. If you're buying on eBay, it'll give you some ideas, especially when you see some of the mistakes I make in terms of listings, so that you can pick out those mistakes and get better deals. On the other hand, if you're a reseller, hopefully you can pick out those mistakes and avoid them in the future, and learn a little bit by the things that we do that are big successes. So. I love sharing this information with you. It's fun to see where things go. Also, I like to show that these things really do sell. We sold every single item last month. I was very pleased with that. Let's take a look at how it did. All right, so this is the first one, and this was a great set here. There was a lot of good material in this because this was the entire assemblage of things that this person who took this trip in 1952 was given by Northwest Airlines. All the flyers, the place card for your seat being occupied, the flyers that tell you all about uh, wonderful places that you can go. You can rent a Hertz car at your destination, a 52 Chevy in that case, and your destination might be Atlantic City or the New York Washington tour, or maybe you take the Orient Express all the way from Seattle through Anchorage to Japan or points beyond. Uh, it's also got the route map, so it's a lot of things that are collectible, and to have all of this ephemera in one place is really fun for people, and it sold for $37. I was very pleased with that. It's nice that somebody's vacation memories didn't get thrown away, and now there's someone else's interesting connection to the past. Okay, this guy, he sold for a little over $100. That was a wonderful price to get. It is the Fenton Uranium Spinning L. That head actually was meant to be a spinner. People don't usually spin them because you can easily knock them off and break them, but originally it had a little piece of tape and it was a decision maker and whatever its beak pointed to told you what to do. Well, after a couple of years they realized that the spinning part just meant a lot of them were ending up in the garbage and people were not happy with that, so they just took that off and made it strictly the votive candlelight. In this case, in their custard glass, which we all now know fluoresces a very bright lime green. So that went for $107 on 19 bids. It actually went to a viewer, and I was very pleased that she got it. This one went for $9.99 on one bid. Little Abner and Al Cap and that whole strip were really a lot of fun, and certainly uh, come from a place in time. And this tumbler from 1948 has little Abner, and he is chasing schmooze or being chased by them. I think he's supposed to be chasing them because he's the one who figured out that if you caught the schmoo that it was endless food and resources forever and they were self-perpetuating and it was a great thing. So uh, the schmooze became very popular in 1948. Okay, this piece here, this went for honestly about what I paid for it and you'll see part of the reason why when you take a look at the shipping cost. $40.70. It did not cost that much to actually ship. We got caught a little bit in the change of postal rates, and had I really thought about the timing of that, I would have actually given more options, and so I had to explain to the potential buyers, please go ahead and make a bid. I'm sure the shipping will be less than this, and we will adjust, and we did. I ended up giving a partial uh, refund on the shipping. Um, so they came out, and I came out fine. I do have a lot of other pieces of this, and it's a great pattern. Uh, Ray Moore, of course, was uh, Irving Richards' company, and he had all sorts of designers all over the world. A lot of people know, of course, about Ray Moore Bitosi ceramics from uh, Italy, for example. Uh, but he also had a lot of dinnerware done by Steubenville in the United States. He had Roseville make a Ray Moore line. It actually put Roseville out of business, unfortunately. Uh, but he was quite prolific and really involved with a lot of the major designers of his era. So it's good design, it's a neat piece, and I'm glad that it's going off to its new home in New York City. City. This next piece here, ah yes, uh, this makes sense, sold to somebody in Georgia who is a collector of Jimmy Carter related stuff because he's their native son after all. Uh, poor Jimmy doesn't seem like he's going to be with us a whole lot longer, uh, but his memory will last and so will this rubber mask of his face that was a very popular thing to wear to costume parties in 1976 and 1977. Uh, and then next to it, as part of the deal, we gave it a twofer because we included the ashtray with the Plains, Georgia information. The package together got eight bids and went for $21, and I think that's a perfectly fine price. 
Ah, this, I was very happy. This went to a viewer as well. And the best part is that he said, please make sure that I get it in time to give to my wife for her birthday. So we sent a priority mail. It should have gotten there. Fingers crossed, it should have had plenty of time. It is a Bartlett Collins piece. I actually also believe I have Sagittarius and maybe Taurus. I got three of these together. Leo, of course, is my sign, and it's also the sign of uh, this period of time. So I figured it would go as a gift to a Leo, and that's exactly what happened. So I hope she's really enjoying her margarita. It went for $21.50 on five bids. These do typically sell between $20 and $30 each. Uh, they're very heavy. They weigh about two pounds each. They are one of the first margarita glasses, and they are quite, quite sturdy. This very beautiful piece here, I was very happy that this sold, and I want to show his great face because this is the sterling stork spoon. If you were not born with a silver spoon, you could get one. And here's a really good example of one. I just love the feathers, the look on his face, even the way that this terminates in his feet. This is very much what design for children was like in that period of time. And then down here you have all the information about this person who was born March 3rd of 1910 at 3.45 p.m. on a Thursday and whose initials were HWH. So this was the initial recipient of the Silver Spoon. Mauser, New York was a very good silver manufacturer that was not around for a long time, but they did very good work and it is sought after. And you can see their very odd mark on the back here. Here's the back of the stork and his legs. You see the sterling mark, and then there's a little squiggle on the left leg there. That is the mark that tells us it's a Mauser piece, so you really have to know that mark because you can't just read it off of there. It went for $24.50 on three bids, and that's more than the sterling value, so I was satisfied with that. This little pocket mirror went for $18 on 14 bids. Uh, it was hard for me to get a good picture of it. The mirror reflected my phone, and I didn't really catch that. This is not the sharpest picture. It's not a great picture. And so I think that, you know, good pictures really make a difference. You do make more money. If it's a bad picture, well, that might be something to bid on because it's not as visually appealing to other people. So I probably left a little money on the table, but I don't think it was worth a ton more than this. And in any event, it's an interesting piece that went to somebody who really isn't going to enjoy it. And it, of course, has a connection to 7-Up because the fellow who started the Howdy soda bottle company also eventually started 7-Up as a lithiated, yes, they had lithium in 7-Up until the 1940s, so no wonder it was a mood enhancer. This next piece, I was so pleased that this found a buyer. None of these were online. We didn't have any real knowledge of how to price it, and sometimes that's when I'll put something on eBay. I figure I'm going to let the market teach me and we'll all learn together, and that's what we did in this case because there were no other Ingrid music boxes with the dancers like this with the Roiga Swiss wind-up music. Uh, this is a 1970s piece. Ingrid was a design house out of Chicago. They made a, or had made a lot of different things that they sold, and so uh, finding another one of these has proven very hard. So we put it out on the market. I think we just started it at $9.99, if I remember right, and it ended up at $76.89 on 10 bids, and I think that's a pretty fair price for a nice music box for the era for the way he danced and what he did and the design of it. I think that was a very fair price, and I'm glad to know now. This uh, came out of my mother's estate, but if I see another one of these in the real world now, I will have an idea of what I might be able to pay for it and how it might sell. And so that's part of the reason we do this. I mean, this is in part an experiment because... We figure that uh, we get to try different pricing structures, try buy it now, try auction only, and see what sticks and what people like. This signature is Ted Williams, and it is a real signature, and you can even tell the way it's blown up here that it's definitely a real pen because notice how it skips a little bit. It's a little thicker and heavier where the, like he traced over the A a little bit again. The other thing interesting about this signature is this signature is Ted. He always signed the baseballs informally with Ted. He only used his full name Theodore for legal documents, which is why to this day there's still controversy over his final will, uh, there's still being, there's still an argument to be made as to whether he actually signed that or whether a piece of paper with his informal signature was used to create that will. This guy here, the Michelin Man, 
he is by Bendem. That is his official name. Bendem was a drinking-related expression, and that had to do with things in France at the time. He was originally depicted as being the host who brought you all there on his safe tires, and now you could have this wonderful party with cocktails. It's a very strange origin, as is the fact that the Michelin Man was designed based on a stack of tires that were sitting outside of an industrial fair in 1894 in France. Uh, one of the Michelin brothers saw it and thought that would make a great logo, and it's turned out to be one of the most enduring and most recognizable logos in the entire world. And people think he's really cute, and he he kind of is in a, a big spare tire in the middle kind of guy way. <laughs> So I got a kick out of him, and so did the people who were bidding on him. He got 25 bids, and he went for $127.50, and that's squarely in the middle or slightly above the middle range of where these usually sell. You know, in summer, you don't always know whether you're going to have people distracted away from the computer. Is it really the best time to sell some of these more uh, specific things? So it was really good to see that, yes, indeed, there is a market and there is a year-round market on eBay. Uh, <laughs> these went to a viewer as well, and she's someone I really enjoy, and she's thinking of maybe using them to paper an area behind her bar, and I hope she's able to do that. They didn't go for a ton of money. It's a very specific thing, and I wasn't exactly sure how to get people to be aware of it, but you notice there are some semi-clad characters frolicking about in the wallpaper. This is right out of the early 70s. You can tell by the color, you can tell by the fact that it's called Right On, with an expression of that times, because it sticks right on to your wall. Uh, they thought that was clever. And it really is just so much fun. I can absolutely see this in a context like she's talking about, where it'll just make the most amazing focal point. So I'm glad she got it. Uh, she only paid $31 for the two rolls, which is actually a little bit on the cheap side. Uh, I think, again, it was sort of hard to... Um, you know, it's a very specific thing. So the fact that somebody really enjoyed it and had a use for it and thought of something, uh, that is part of the reason, by the way, that I typically leave these as 10-day auctions rather than doing shorter, is because sometimes it takes a while for somebody to see something and then figure out what they're going to do with it and then figure out if you have enough of the material that they need and then make that decision. So uh, giving people time is helpful. I, I try to avoid three-day auctions. This guy went really well, and I have to thank the uh, person in the comments and the video where I initially saw this guy at an antique show in Indiana and failed to buy him, meant to, forgot to go back and pick him up, and one of the comments was, I sure hope you got that bull. He was fantastic. Well, fortunately, they had it at the show in the area that was happening where I was doing appraisals a couple weeks later, and I went ahead and bought it from them there. And I'm really glad I did, because I don't know whether that person who made the comment is the person who ultimately bought this, but 29 bids were taken on it. So there is really interest in this. It's a great mid-century design. It's the bull, which Treasure Craft started with the bull and Matador in the late 50s, and it became a classic design of the era, and lots of companies ended up making bulls, including this rather obscure Hungarian company from Varaslad, which is a redware pottery making area in Hungary. There's the redware for you with the Hungarian Majolica mark. Ultimately, this went charging off into someone else's life for $77. And so thank you to the person who encouraged me to buy this. I learned about a company I didn't know a lot about before, and I made a new customer. This piece was very, very pretty. I like Japanese cloisonne. This is not a great picture. It needed more light. I'm just seeing that now. I really have to check my pictures better. Oftentimes, that's the point where you're really on the deadline, so you just put the pictures in and think you're going to upgrade, upgrade them, and then you never go back and do it. However, people got the point about this anyway, because they could see the slightly translucent blue glaze, and that's definitely typical of Japanese cloisonne from the early 1900s. And they tended to do these green enamel interiors because their pieces were a lot more lightweight than the Jap than the Chinese, and the Chinese were known for it and considered better quality, so they put the enamel in to make it um, less likely to have corrosion on the inside, but also to give it a little more weight. So that's how you can tell Japanese cloisonne. It's a really beautiful piece, I think. 
and someone else agreed in those rich, deep jewel tones that are coming back into style, so it went for $102 on 10 bids. I was very happy with this too. It sold for just what it should have, $51, and it was such a sweet story. I was so glad to get to tell about how Hummel is the name of a nun, and she was the artist who was discovered and who allowed her things to be recreated as figurines. And that was why the Goebel company really took off, but she never got to benefit from that. It was very sad that she did not get to see the incredible impact that her little drawings of cherubic children ended up making on people all over the world because of the popularity of Goebel figurines. When Mr. Goebel licensed the art from her in the 1930s, neither she nor he realized that soon they would be under the oppression of the Nazis, and Adolf Hitler hated Hummel figurines because they didn't depict German children as being master race Aryan creatures. It depicted them as being cute and pudgy and sweet like children are. <laughs> so, uh, Hitler was not a fan, but a whole lot of other people are, and this was done as a 75th anniversary tribute to her. And I'm just so glad that it, somebody else enjoyed it and took it for $51. It got six bids. This piece sold on eight bids. It sold for about what I expected it would because I'd seen the same pin with earrings sell for $200 recently. So, the pin alone went for $122.50. That seems about right. And on the back here, we see the Paris, New York Givenchy label. Givenchy was such a trendsetter, and one of the first designers to really go beyond just clothes and jewelry into designing all sorts of things. He was one of the first to design the interior of a car. I think he did a Lincoln Mark 7 or something like that. Uh, so Hubert Givenchy was a really influential designer, and it was so fun to have a piece. I don't find it very often. It sold just like it should have. It's a great name in jewelry. This guy here, the Nexium drug rep ad swag. That little face is where a clock would go. I wasn't sure how this would do. Drug rep swag can go really high. I kind of thought this might have potential because it's an unusual piece. But again, none of this stuff is all that old, and I don't think anybody has a real idea of how much is out there yet. A lot of hospitals, when this started to be frowned upon about 20 years ago, uh, donated everything that they had gotten from drug reps and sent it off to one hospital famously sent everything to Cameroon because they'd been given so many t-shirts and so many towels and things that they figured people in a poor country could use. Uh, so, you know, is there a lot of this around or is this going to prove to be a very scarce thing in the future? We really don't know. Not enough time has elapsed, but we're starting to find out because there are starting to be a lot of people collecting drug rep swag because you're not allowed to do that anymore. And that always seems to attract people's attention. I knew this would likely sell since I was going to be in Seattle and be able to ship it locally, and it did sell, but I ended up having to ship it halfway across the country. It is Steve Largent. This was his Wheaties box. He was still playing when this was done, so he hadn't actually set all the records he was going to set, some of which are listed on the side here. I just recently got the Greg Luganus box. That was another one. That one was kind of controversial. They wouldn't put him on the box at first because he came out of the closet. And then later on they said, oh, well, I guess we shouldn't hold that against you, so now we'll put you on the box. And uh, so I'll probably put that one out to sell fairly soon, too. This went for $9.99 on one bid. They typically sell for about $15 to $20, and with shipping, that's right where the uh, uh, person was at when they bought the piece. These are really cool, too. I wanted to do a little bit of paper ephemera. I made a little exception to my usual rule. I try not to put things that are too worn or damaged online because it's hard for the people to see, and sometimes it means you don't get the price you should. In this case, it worked out because people realized that even though these menus are tattered and yellowed and have been used a lot, that they are from two really vibrant, vital, interesting Hollywood-related places. One being the Brown Derby. If you see, this is the second of the Brown Derbies. This is the one that was put in the old uh, Hacienda-style building. This is where, uh, in 1955, I believe, I Love Lucy filmed a couple of famous episodes. 
and lots of stars went there. And then the other one was from the It Cafe, which operated in the late 30s and the early part of the Second World War and was run by Clara Bow, the It Girl. Well, owned by she and her associates. I'm sure she wasn't there actually running the place, but she hung out there sometimes. So the two of these together, I figured they had something in common because they're both Hollywood related. And sure enough, 10 bids. $45. I was very pleased. I thought that was con condition considering especially. I thought that was really appropriate. And look at the prices. Oh my goodness. We have Lucky Lager for 20 cents. We have ooh, Champagne for 60 cents if you're really uh, stepping out there. This is at the It Cafe, I believe. And, uh, oh my gosh, this is uh, quite a large beverage list. A lot of people like to go to the Hollywood Plaza and uh, hang out and get into trouble, and it was in the bottom of the Hollywood Plaza, so this would have been one place to do it. And then our last item, the picture is not as sweet as she was, but it went to uh, someone I met at the Portland uh, Rose City Antique Market this month for the first time, and I'm so glad she got it. The only mark it has is this little mark that says 6445, because the other label, if it had had one, it would have been next to the Made in Japan label on the back, and it would have said Lefton, and this one does not have that, but this is a George Lefton piece. It, the picture doesn't really do it justice. In fact, the picture is actually quite terrible. I'm sure that when she got it at home, she was very pleased. There's something about these metallic glazes that doesn't always photograph really well, and especially if you have to enlarge the piece. So I'm going to have to work on camera equipment, I think, for this sort of uh, shooting. Fortunately, she's so much better looking in person than she is in this picture that she sold. The person who got it is very happy with her, and I'm very happy she got her. And she went for $73 on 15 bids. That's about the same price that the mermaids I took to the show sold at. And so, really, I would say eBay this month was running right at retail level uh, for the selling prices of pretty much everything, and a couple of little extra pops as well. So, we are very pleased. It's so much fun to bring this to you. Let me switch back to the full screen here and just tell you how much I appreciate all of you for watching, how much I appreciate the Level 2 and Level 3 members who make the eBay listing videos possible and by extension make this video possible. And if you are a Level 2 or 3 member and you're watching this, look for a post in the community tab and you will be finding out when your but early access to the next Level 2 eBay listing video is that will be coming out very soon. For those of you who are interested, uh, click join if you see that on your screen or go to um, way down in the description below the dotted line, look for where it says memberships and you can find out more about that. In the meantime, thank you so much for joining me. I am excited to go look for more stuff to show you and we will be with you again with lots more adventures from the antique world. Bye for now! If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.